Well, it's another very warm welcome back, all my internet vintage dirt bike browsers and subscribers. And thanks again for your loyalty by continuing to tune in to my classic dirt bike TV channel. Now, I hope I still find you all safe and well during these very unprecedented times we find ourselves living in. Now, in my next feature clip, we're going to take another look at Ian Ward's British classic. So I hope you'll stay with me for the next few minutes as we have a browse at Ian's 1966 Villiers 250. Now Ian from Middlesbrough in the UK has owned this bike for many years and currently races this machine at Scottish Classic race events in the north of the country. Now the bike is essentially a 1966 Villiers 250, although Ian insists uh, it's not an original bike from that year and uh, this machine is very much a work in progress type of bike as the frame and swing arm have been adapted to suit Ian's personal individual requirements through the years. Now Ian likes to change the bits and pieces on this machine whenever the mood takes him and although his uh, personal colour coordination may not be to everybody's liking, this uh, little bike is still a fine looking old classic and a good little weekend racer. Now the motor in Ian's bike is the Villiers 250 engine although again Ian tells me that uh, this is a mix of parts taken from the Villiers uh, 32A and 36A series of Villiers power plants. And as we mentioned, it's not a fully fledged uh, original bike from 1966 due to the different parts that Ian has put on this bike, but it's uh, still a very good little uh, two-stroke dirt bike. Now the Villiers engine was a decent enough motor for a British two-stroke in 1966. Okay, it was never going to be a world beater this engine for its time, but these were still very popular motors in their day and were widely used in trials and scrambles bikes at the time. But these were quite uh, basic two-stroke motors of their day and uh, no uh, reed valve, just a simple piston port engine. Now this Villiers engine is made up, as I uh, said, using parts from the Villiers uh, 32A and 36A series of engines and Ian likes to uh, mix and match parts to try and make this uh, motor work slightly better. Now, a uh, quite modern looking Makuni carb, where back in the day I think these would have been fitted with an old uh, Amol monoblock carburetor. Now, Ian's also manufactured this lovely uh, alloy air box to house the air filter. But although these engines were pretty basic for 1966, these were very reliable motors and in the many years that Ian has owned this bike, this engine in particular has taken him to many a good championship finish and uh, in at least the last five years, Ian has taken home uh, much championship silverware uh, due to the reliability of this little two-stroke motor. Now the front forks on Ian's bike are, as you would expect, not a set of British made suspension units but are actually a pair of forks taken from an RM125 Suzuki. But of course these Suzuki forks will be of better quality than any of the old British made forks from this 1966 period. And you can see Ian's added, added a nice pair of uh, fork gaiters to protect the sliders from the ingress of dust 
and dirt. Now yet another one of Ian's upgrades was to fit a pair of these Falcon rear shocks. Again these are very good quality units and certainly better than anything that would have been fitted on this bike back in 1966. But this motor had your standard uh, wet multi-plate clutch and if I remember correctly these had a four speed gearbox at the time. Now this expansion chamber looks like it was uh, specifically engineered to fit this bike and doesn't look like anything that you would buy off the shelf for this bike and of course uh, this expansion chamber goes in to this lovely alloy tailpipe and hopefully we'll have a chance to hear this bike fire up just uh, shortly. Now this fuel tank, I'm not entirely sure if this is actually the fuel tank for the bike but uh, I was unable to gain that information from Ian but uh, I'm uh, not going to guess as to who the actual uh, maker of the fuel tank is but it fits very nicely right here on Ian's bike. Now Ian also did a bit of engineering on the swing arm and uh, as to what uh, he did to the swing arm, whether he lengthened it or shortened it, I'm not exactly sure, but he did do some engineering work on the swing arm to suit his own personal riding requirements. And once again, another uh, lovely, comfortable seat. There's many of these old classic bikes seem to have had uh, very nice, uh, comfortable seats way back in the 1960s. Now as I mentioned earlier the uh, quite unorthodox paint scheme might not be to everybody's liking with the uh, blue and the red uh, motifs but uh, like I said this is an individual's bike and Ian wanted to put his uh, own mark on his own machine and uh, he seems to think that uh, these colours are just the way he wants it, but that's Ian's very own uh, personal identity. But despite Ian's rather strange choices in colours, uh, it's still a cracking looking little bike, this uh, 250 Villiers. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, this bike has been ultra reliable for Ian well, he's been racing this bike with the Scottish Classic Motorcycle Racing Club and these are just a couple of snaps that I managed to grab of Ian uh, doing his stuff on the racetrack with his lovely 250 Villiers. So we've had a quick look at Ian's bike and seen a couple of uh, pictures of Ian in action on the track. Let's uh, just get Ian to fire the bike up and let's have a listen to what she sounds like. So there you have it, that's uh, Ian Ward's 1966 250 Villiers. Well I hope you enjoyed this uh, very short video and I hope you continue to support my YouTube channel by uh, checking out more 
of these classic old vintage racers when we return. So until then, be safe, ride safe, and we'll speak again very soon. This video was brought to you in association with VMX Magazine, your number one publication for classic, vintage and off-road motorcycles. Just visit their online website for more information.